This episode of the QA is brought to you by Lucky Shot. Happy end of the month to you. It is the end of the month, last Monday of the month, which means it is time for the QA. It is the August 2019 edition of the QA for Guns and Tactics. My name is Dave Tim. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day and uh, watching this video and spending some time with us. We have six questions I have on the roster today. And as always, I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this episode, which is Lucky Shot. We'll hear more from them in a moment, but they make some really cool glassware, as you can tell. There's a bullet in there, and if you're in the mood for a delicious summer pineapple beverage, it tastes a lot better in cool glassware. So thanks to Lucky Shot for taking care of us for this episode and providing one lucky winner a cool prize that will be sent out. And I apologize for the delay. Uh, we had some issues on our end, but we're going to be getting prizes out uh, to last month's winner ASAP as well as this month's. So before I get into our questions, I actually have a question for you. Um, and first things first, I apologize. The studio shop is kind of in complete mess. You can kind of see some green screen over there. Uh, I'm in the middle of filming a bunch of installation videos for another firearms related client, which kind of brings me to this month's trivia question. I kind of like that. A couple months ago, I had a trivia question that some of you guys knew the answer to. So if you can, can you name two companies that I currently make installation videos for. You'd have to find their YouTube channel or their webpage, but do you know of at least two companies that I make installation videos for? So for example, you find their part, the 101 widget, and then on their webpage or on their channel, it would show an installation video made by me of how to install 101 widget on your firearm. So um, depending on how you look at it, there's four companies that I know of that are currently using the material, but if you can name two, good for you. So that's gonna be this uh, month's trivia question. Sound off in the comment section below if you know the answer. Before we get started though, I did have a question for you and that is where do you wanna see the channel go, particularly this fall and winter? Obviously in the winter, it's a little bit tougher for me to film outside. I do plan on doing some cold weather stuff outside being that I'm kind of an expert by default living in Minnesota. So we are gonna do some cold weather range stuff, that's on the list. Uh, but then there are gonna be a bunch of shop videos, gunsmithing, I know I've gotten requests for a muzzle device installation, um, I can't remember what exactly, maybe some basic machining, stuff like that. But uh, actually that's one of the questions coming up on the muzzle device, but yeah. So we will do some more reviews as well, but before it gets completely cold, I do have some more range videos coming. I know we got a request for those. Uh, I got to go to a precision rifle match. I got to do, I just did one on front slide serrations. Uh, I'm going to be doing another one on handgun manipulation, kind of part two of that series, and I'm gonna be doing some more drills as well. So, But I wanna know what you guys wanna see me do. If you have a request, if you wanna say, hey, how do I do this? Or do a video, your opinion on that. Anything that we can do in the shop over the winter is also great. So something that would be in the workshop, gunsmithing related, installation related, whatever it might be, go ahead and let me know. So that is that, I look forward to hearing from you. Question number one. Saw a previous video on the bootleg adjustable bolt carrier group. I'll put a card up there to the first look, wondering how it panned out and your thoughts. I've been looking at it for duty use. Um, the version I had was very reliable. It uh, basically had it installed on an 11 and a half inch short barrel gun with suppressed. And I actually find it, found that it did make a difference. When I had it in the suppressed setting, I not only could feel less gas, even with my gas buster charging handle mod, but the gun seemed to cycle a little bit better and there was just a hair less felt recoil. So I really did like it. Now, I stopped using it because I was told they were gonna send me a new version that had forward assist serrations. And unfortunately I never did and I kind of lost track of things and things you know, fell behind or whatever. So I never did, but I do have the original version here. I should probably follow up on that and see what's going on. But I do like the idea of that. It was a it was a cool idea, especially if you already have a gun that has a pinned gas block, whatever, you don't have the opportunity to put an adjustable gas block in. That adjustable carrier actually did work. It was it was pretty legit. Number two, maybe half a dozen years back when I jumped into AR builds, I read a lot about parts. Uh, it seemed NIB was the better way to go for bolt carrier groups and I did that from WMD. They make really good coatings. Their new uh, NIB-X is kind of their latest version of nickel boron uh, is what NIB stands for. With all the constant changing products to coat, is it still a good option? Should I check anything else? Uh, thanks for what you do. I always look forward from new content from you. Oh, thank you, man. Thanks for the kind words. And this is from Frank in New Hampshire. 
So uh, NIV is still a good coating. Uh, there's a lot of different coatings out there. NP3, hard chrome, melanite, salt nitride, QPC, which uh, quench polish, QPQ, yeah, which are all the same for melaniting or salt nitriding or you know whatever buzzword you want to uh, look at. Uh, there's DLC, diamond light coating. So here's my thing. Number one, I want to make sure it's a good quality part. If you put a wonder finish on a turd part, it's still a turd. So make sure you're still getting good quality parts. The standard bolt carrier group finish is a phosphate finish. And if you actually go back to the original designs, uh, Mr. Stoner called for that to actually be hard chrome, called for the bolt carrier to be hard chrome. So if you look at some of the old, old, old original prototype guns, they actually had a hard chrome carrier and they ended up cutting that for cost. Uh, they found that the hard chrome was a little bit more expensive, but really it wasn't, wasn't worth it, so they went with that phosphate. Now, a lot of other carriers out there are hard chrome. I have some hard chrome carriers that I run from a young machine. I have some melanited stuff from JP. Um, I have hard chrome from another company. I can't remember who it is offhand. Um, it'll come to me probably after I make the video. And then I also have run ion bonded carriers when I was working for a piston company. All of them work pretty good. I still truthfully haven't found one that's like the wonder carrier coating of lube free. I still lube everything, but you know, I yeah, NIB is still a good option. Um, some companies have had issues with flaking and things like that, so make sure you're checking for reviews, make sure you're checking the forums for credible sources, not just paid marketing pieces or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think you'll be just fine with NIB. Otherwise, you'll be just fine with a good quality carrier from the you know reputable manufacturers of ion bonded melanite even phosphate if you lube it up it's just a little bit tougher to clean but i don't clean my ars very much i just throw them in the ultrasonic when i do or i scrub them and go from there but that's a great question thank you very much uh frank question number three i recently watched your video pin and weld versus 16 uh i think i'm running out of cards but i'll put a card up there and he's considering buying a Knight's Armament SR15 with a 14 and a half inch barrel, which I believe comes with a 13 inch handguard. I want to install a muzzle brake uh, and cut the barrel to approximately 13.3. Muzzle brake is 2.7. So 13.3 plus 2.7, which if my math is correct, should make an overall barrel length of 16. Wrong. And I'll tell you why here in a second. I want to do all this so that way when I install the Surefire Warden, it sits as flush or as close to the handguard as possible. Any insight or advice? So this is from Ron. Ron, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that it's not 13.3 plus 2.7 equals 16. On a AR-15, the blueprint calls for the thread length to be 0.625, which means that that 2.7 inch muzzle device is overlapping 0.625, the threads and the muzzle device. So we actually have 13.3 minus 0.625. So we're actually at like 12.7 plus 2.7, which means it is like 15 and a half. So we're a little short. So you'd be better off cutting it to either 14 inches or 13.9. So you have just a little bit of wiggle room and then having the muzzle device. Cause you have to remember the two overlap. So it's not just plus plus. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. I have um, the Triarch barrel. That's going to be a review coming up. I'm wrapping that up. I have a class that I'm going to in the early part of the month. So hopefully come September, there'll be the review out on that. But that's a 13.9 inch barrel with a dead air muzzle device on it. And uh, that's actually a really sweet setup, similar to probably what you're looking for. So that is something to keep in mind with that. Plus, if you did it to that 13.9 inches, it would give you a little bit more clearance on that 13 inch handguard. So I think that would be a better fit for you. So that is Ron. Now, before we get into question number four, we do have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Lucky Shot. And they make some really cool glassware. This particular one is a nice tumbler with a 30 cal lead safe bullet that I really enjoy taking a summertime beverage break with. Mm. Seriously, pineapple soda, it's amazing. And those that know me, I mean, really know me, know that I like a certain kind of pineapple soda. Maybe if you know me, you can post that in the comment section too. And yes, the rumors are true. I did have some shipped from Washington when I was out there at TriggerCon. I had to ship pineapple soda back because we don't have it here. And then lo and behold, I kind of found it. Anyway, long as enough on their video topic. Lucky Shot. I'm going to show you some pictures of the webpage right now. They have all sorts of cool products 
for the guy or gal in your life that might be into firearms, accessories, firearms, but yet also wants some fine glassware and a nice decorative talking piece as well. It could be for a bachelor, bachelorette party, birthday party, or a just because present. Check out their webpage. And if you use the coupon code posted on the video right there, you can get a discount as well. So you can get the cool stuff, save a little bit of money by using that coupon code, and it also helps support the show because Lucky Shot is supporting making this happen. So we thank Lucky Shot for supporting the show and providing the prize for this month, and we hope you check out their webpage and pick out something cool for you, yourself, or someone you love, and again, use that discount code to save a little bit of money. Number five, this is from Rusty in Oregon. Adjustable weight buffer or adjustable gas block, or both, and why? I like how he adds the Y. <clears throat> adjustable weight buffers. There's actually uh, Strike Industries just kind of is talking about a new adjustable weight buffer where you can actually unscrew it and add weights or reduce weights pretty quickly. Otherwise, a lot of the other adjustable weight buffers, really, you have to have a pin punch and a pin to take out the buffer from the body, and then you have to add weights or whatever. And then the other model that I knew of a few years ago uh, wasn't very reliable that I saw. It was actually... It, had some sort of liquid in there as well, but uh, I had some issues with that leaking and I've heard of other people having the same issues or whatever. So I would kind of hold off on the buffer section. And if you're gonna look at it, if you're starting from scratch, you can look at an adjustable gas block. Now, what you didn't give me, Rusty, is what you're hoping to do. If you're looking to shoot suppressed, having a quick switch type gas block like the Seekins or an Oveski switch block or uh, another new one from Strike is coming out where it has like a ratcheting system. Those are all really cool options. Or if you're just looking to reduce felt recoil and make a really smooth shooting gun, then you can use all sorts of the other great low profile gas block options. But generally a gas block is gonna give you more adjustment than a buffer. Uh, just because we don't have a lot of great options out there right now. The other option you could do is add an adjustable gas block plus a buffer spring system, kind of like the JP Silent captured spring system. Armaspec makes a version as well where you're not only changing the mass, but you're also changing the springs and it's a kind of a tunable system. So something like that may work for you as well. But if you want to follow up, don't be afraid to shoot me an email and uh, we can talk more about that. That's from Rusty. And last is from Quentin. Oh, I skipped one, number four. Sorry about that. You mentioned in a video some time back you intended to do a video on muzzle device installation. Is it coming up anytime soon? And yes, uh, I plan on probably doing that like late fall, early winter, just because it's something I can do inside. And when I have nice weather, I'd rather be shooting outside if I can, doing something, going somewhere, maybe doing a drill, whatever. But it is coming up. And I know another question I got was regarding rock set, if that was considered permanent or not. And it is not, even if you rock set a muzzle device, and I would argue that you would have a heck of a time removing it in the field with a wrench, it is still not considered permanent in the eyes of the ATF. The only permanent methods to attach a muzzle to add to overall barrel length are blind, pinned, and weld, or silver solder, or you could, I suppose, do a technically a complete weld. But generally, the two methods that are acceptable by the ATF are silver, silver solder, or the blind, pinned, and weld. So that uh, is another question that I didn't necessarily address because it kind of goes in with jeans here, which is about the muzzle device video. So look forward to that this winter. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, you can stay up to date on all of our content. This last question, finally, for real this time, is from Quentin. Quentin, I believe, uh, I can't remember where you are. I want to say Colorado but good to hear from you again. I do appreciate it. He's a uh, long time listener. Why should I stop shooting 5.56 out of my 223 Savage Model 10? And for those of you that don't know, that is a bolt action rifle. So here's the thing with that. Sammy, the uh, spec place that makes all of the specs for ammunition, will report that 5.56 ammunition does have a higher pressure than 223. If you were to cut a barrel, chamber a barrel, there's different reamers for 223 versus 556. There's also different gauges, headspace gauges for 223 versus 556. There is a difference. Now, you can contact Savage Direct and ask them. That would be the ultimate best opinion because if something were to happen, that's generally where you would start. You'd start with the manufacturer of the gun and the ammunition. And I'm willing to bet 99 cents out of 100 cents that if you were to email Savage and say, hey, is it okay if I shoot 5.56 five, five, ammo out of this 223 gun? They are probably gonna say, no, it was designed for 223 Remington. Now, I don't own a Savage Model 10. I don't have the owner's manual offhand, but that's what I'm guessing they would, saying, uh, would say, and if I'm wrong, then I owe you a dollar. 
but the pressure capability is higher. Now one could argue a bolt action locks up and it's really solid and is probably safe to shoot. Yeah, you probably are maybe a thousand or 10,000 times, but what if that 1,001 or 10,001 times that pressure was just a little bit higher and then you did have an issue. So ultimately I would still recommend shooting 223 out of your 223 gun just because that's what it was designed for, what the chamber is. And if you're worried about economic ammo, there's tons of cheap ammo that you can get in 223. And truth be told, it might even be a little bit more accurate as well. Generally, a lot of the cheaper 556 ammo isn't necessarily known for its accuracy. It's known for its cheapness, unless it's maybe like a duty round or something like that. Maybe you're looking at like a tech bonded, even though I think tech bonded now is available in 223, or you can get like the Federal Fusion, which is a bonded bullet, which is about the same thing, but it's in their hunting line from Federal. That's a really great hunting round, by the way. And uh, that might be something for you to consider. So I hope that's the short answer. I hope that makes sense. But I would definitely recommend shooting 223 Remington, 223 out of that gun because that's what it's made for. Before we wrap up this video, we do have to give away a prize from Lucky Shot. So we're gonna generate a random number between one and six because we had six questions. And that number is number two. I doubt you can see that, but it is number two, which means that is Frank from New Hampshire. So Frank, uh, get in touch with us or I'll get in touch with you and we'll send a prize from me to New Hampshire, which I don't think that's the show me state. I don't even know what New Hampshire, I don't know what the New Hampshire state is. No, it's not the show me state. It's the syrup, no, that's Vermont. Anyways, I apologize, live free or die. I can't remember. Anyways, Frank, we're gonna get a prize to you. If you wanna see your question on the show, the best way to get us your question is to email us. I'm gonna put the email address right there at the bottom. It is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. Shoot us an email. You can also leave a comment. If you can, remember to use the hashtag the QA. That's fine. Otherwise, I do my best to try to scour through all the comments, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. And speaking of which, if you've made it this far, if you're watching on Facebook, let me know what you think of the new format, yay or nay. Or maybe you didn't even notice a difference. I don't know. But we're trying something new, trying to be more Facebook optimized with the algorithm. And uh, hopefully you like it. Hopefully it was a more pleasant experience because... 90% of viewers, I guess, on Facebook video are on their phone, so let me know what you think. And if you're watching this on YouTube, check out our Facebook page, Guns and Tactics. If you're watching this on Facebook, we would really appreciate you heading over to YouTube and subscribing. And if you're on Instagram, we have the same cool format as well. Let us know what you think. Always check out our content at gunsandtactics.com as well. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, Check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.